I feel like it's kind of hard to find really good, super affordable pre-algebra books. And that's what this is. This is a book that is very affordable. It's widely available. It's modern. It's well done. And it can help you if you don't know any math and you're trying to get better at math. Now it says it's the complete high school study guide. Everything you need to ace pre-algebra and algebra one in one big fat notebook. But it's for everyone, right? It's not just for high school students. Anyone can use this to learn pre-algebra. It's not a hard cover and it's not a soft cover. It's like somewhere in between. It's like a weird like hybrid hard cover, soft cover. I have almost all of the big fat notebooks, not all of them. Um, and they're great. Uh, I've read big portions of these and I think they're just, I mean, it's really easy once you know math to read these books. So it's like you can lay in bed and read it. Um, very well done, very easy to read. So this one was first printed in July 2021, it says. It's by Workman Publishing. The Complete High School Study Guide. Everything you need to ace pre-algebra and algebra one in one big fat notebook. And here it tells you a little bit how the book is organized. It's really cool. It says, this notebook is designed to support you as you work through the major areas of pre-algebra and algebra one. Consider these the notes taken by the smartest person in your algebra class, the one who seems to get everything and who takes clear, understandable, accurate notes. And then here it talks a little bit more about it. It says, within these chapters, you'll find important concepts presented in an accessible, relatable way. Linear equations and inequalities, statistics and probability, functions, factoring polynomials, and solving and graphing quadratic equations are all presented as notes you can easily understand. It's algebra for the regular person. Notes are presented in an organized way. So it says important vocabulary words are highlighted in yellow, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just, let's just jump into it so you can see the actual design. So let's look at the contents. So arithmetic properties, the crows agree. <laughs> the number system, so really basic stuff, right? Pre-algebra. But then it has harder stuff too, as we'll see. Ratios, proportions, and percent. Exponents and algebraic expressions. Linear equations and inequalities. And then graphing linear equations and inequalities. And statistics and probability. And functions and polynomial operations. And there's one more page here. Factoring polynomials, radicals, quadratic equations, a little bit more advanced than what you would typically see in pre-algebra, and then quadratic functions, even, even graphing quadratic functions and solving quadratic equations by graphing. These are topics that um, are a little bit harder compared to you know, the first unit of, of this book. By the, way, by the way, I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check out this book. Uh, very inexpensive. That's one of the reasons I bought it. It's so cheap. So I was like, why not? You know, it's a pre-algebra book for, I forgot how much I paid, but it was very, very inexpensive for an actual book. Now, it's not a textbook. By a textbook, I mean like, you know, one of those big, thick, hardcover books that has like, you know, thousands or hundreds of problems. And um, it's a little bit lighter than that. It's not going to have everything, as you can see. So types of numbers. I like how it's all laid out and easy to read. Everything's highlighted for you. You know, it's really... And then when you read the section, you, you get to this part here. And this is cool because you do these problems and then you turn the page and then you have the answers here. So you don't even need to go to the back of the book. You can just turn the page and, and there you have the answers. Let's jump ahead to like something harder. Let's just like go to like a random spot. Let's go here, see what this is. Slope, so this is a harder subject for pre-algebra, right? So it's pretty easy, right, slope. Oh, 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 something else I wanna show you, see this? They're color-coded, the chapters, so like you know, like, oh, I'm in the purple area, or oh, I'm in the green area, so you know how to find uh, the, different, uh, the different chapters. And look, look, it's color-coded here too. See that blue? So you can go to the blue, and then you're in that area, so kind of fun. All right, let's see what it says about slope. 
Slope is generally referred to as the steepness of a line. More specifically, slope is a number that is a ratio describing the tilt of a line. Interesting. Slope is calculated by finding the ratio of the vertical change, rise, to the horizontal change, run. Right, slope is rise over run. Rise is how much a line goes up or down. Run is how much a line moves left or right. For example, a line has a slope of two-thirds. Since the formula for slope is rise over run, this means that the rise is two and the run is three. Then here it says, since the rise, zoom out a little bit here, is represented by a positive number, it means that the line is rising vertically or going up. Since the run is represented by a positive number, it means that the line is running horizontally or going to the right. So here they have a really beautiful example. Look how well drawn this is. If we start at the point negative 5, negative 5, which is here, and plot a line with a slope of 2 thirds, we get the graph below. So you rise 2, run 3, rise 2, run 3, rise 2, run 3. Beautiful example, right? Just crystal clear. Um, it's not your typical graph like you see in most books. It's got colors. I mean, just a fabulous work of art. Even the writing is kind of fun. They use like a fun font. A slope of two-thirds means that every time the line rises two, it also runs three. Since the slope is a ratio, it can be expressed as various ratios of numbers. Right, so like you could do four over six. That would be the same thing, right? You rise four, run six. It's going to give you the same line, right? Because uh, they're the same fraction. Find another way to draw a line with the slope two-thirds. So here it says a line with the slope of two-thirds could also be expressed as negative two over negative three. This means that the rise is negative two and the run is negative three. Since the rise is represented by a negative number, it means that the line is going down. Since the run is represented by a negative number, it means that the line is going left. So you go down two, left three, down two, left three, down two, left three, same thing and you get, you get the same line. Really good examples, right? I feel like it's very clear. And there's more of it here, and they talk a little bit more about different types of slope, undefined slope. Yeah, I like this. A line with an undefined slope is vertical because the run is zero, and any non-zero number divided by zero is undefined, right? Vertical lines have an undefined slope because it's rise over run, but you're not going anywhere because the run is zero, so you can't divide by zero. This one's important too. A line with zero slope is horizontal because the rise is zero and zero divided by any number is zero. So whenever you have a horizontal line, the slope is zero. Remember, it's rise over run. You're not rising anywhere, so it's zero over run, which is going to be zero as long as you know, your run is non-zero, which is going to be the case. Yeah, and then positive slope rises, negative slope it falls. So pretty cool, pretty pretty good. And then you keep reading, there's more examples. We're a pretty big section here. And then check your knowledge. So you have some questions here you answer. You turn the page. Some more questions you answer. And then the answers, you turn the page here, and then you have all the answers right here. So just, just a perfect book. Uh, it's excellent for anyone who wants to learn mathematics. The sections are short. They're not going to take you a ton of time to go through. It's perfect. If you don't have a lot of time, you're trying to learn pre-algebra, just do a section a day, you know, or even less than that. Just pick up the book and read anything. Any learning you do is better than zero learning. I, I think that's, that's a key point. So yeah, I like it. I recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description. If you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. The key takeaway from this video should be that this is an excellent book. It's affordable and you can use it to learn mathematics. Also, if you want to learn math, I do have courses on mathematics, including algebra courses or an algebra course. They're on, my, they're on Udemy, but if you get them, please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Check them out. Um, I've got tons of math courses and they can help you. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.